many Far Cry fans, Far Cry 3 was the pinnacle of the Far Cry experience. One of the reasons that game was so memorable was that you were put in the shoes of a fish out of water. I mean, fish don't wear shoes of course, but y you get my point. Despite him being a jock douche, it wasn't hard to empathise with Jason Brody during those first few hours, where he's completely out of his element and learning to survive in the jungles and beaches of the Rook Islands. Underskilled, outnumbered, and stranded on a strange island with the psychotic vase hot on your heels, it always felt like you were one tiny fish step away from tragedy and an untimely death. More recent Far Cry's have progressively steered away from 3 setup, making each protagonist more and more of a one-person army. It's less about survival of the individual and more about the survival of a revolution. With Far Cry 6, we see the culmination of that ideology. Ubisoft boasts that, on Yara, you'll be made to feel like a single guerrilla fighter, taking up the space of an entire army. Danny Rojas is ex-military, instantly proficient in all weapons and vehicles, and a natural but reluctant leader. They were made for this. The developers at Ubisoft want you to feel powerful. They want you to feel like a badass. They've leaned into the chaos, the explosions, and the epic wacky battles. And so, as an open world sandbox, Far Cry 6 is a lot of fun. An unfortunate side effect of that, however, is that, where the story is concerned, Far Cry 6 has lost a lot of the interesting tension of previous games. You're no longer a Jason Brody, finding your way, learning your skills, and simply fighting to live. You're now a T-1000, striding through Yara, firing rockets from your nuclear backpack, all whilst conjuring an almost unlimited arsenal of weaponry from out of thin air. Danny always has a quip, is never under pressure, and always knows exactly what to do. Which is fine when you're out mowing down your 20th Soldado outpost in a row, armed only with a solid gold grenade launcher and the help of your pet crocodile wapo, but not all that interesting when it comes to investing in Far Cry 6's story. I will be feared. Viva Libertad. Luckily though, the open world fun of Far Cry 6 is as good as it ever was. Yara is both enormous and absolutely beautiful, featuring some of the most incredible views you're likely to find in any video game. Exploring actually feels a little bit intimidating and overwhelming at first, with so much out there to uncover. And after a small tutorial island, the game lets you go pretty much wherever you want. Though once you strike out, you'll quickly find it's all more or less the same fare as other Far Cry games. There are checkpoints to clear, hostages to rescue from the side of the road, collectibles to hunt down and cross off your lengthy list. Mechanically then, the framework is almost identical. And depending on who you are, this can either come as a reassurance or a disappointment. Many players do love that familiar Far Cry grind, but some may have been hoping for a shake-up to the formula. I stand before you armed with truth. Front and centre of any and all marketing for Far Cry 6 has been its much-touted villain, Anton Castillo, played by consummate bad guy Giancarlo Esposito. And it's a shame to see that, in the end, he's criminally underused. The game checks in with Anton every few hours, assuming you're following the main storyline, and it's not really enough to give you a real sense of who he is and how much of a threat he poses to Yara and its people. He's mostly kept away from the action, and he's simply not as interesting as previous villains, because a lot of the things he's done to earn his reputation is never shown. It's only implied by the game and told about in passing in cutscenes. He's more often shown lecturing his impressionable young son Diego, a dynamic and a relationship that also doesn't feel as pivotal to the game as originally promised. There are a couple of scenes where Esposito gets to really show his teeth, and these are undoubtedly memorable, but more often than not, Anton is relegated to just being a bit of a shit dad. Even acknowledging the effort to make him a more sympathetic villain, in that he's a man with a vision who truly believes the end justifies the means, he lacks the grandiose psychopathy of Vast, the flamboyant mischievousness of pagan men, and the stomach-churning creepiness of Jacob Seed. 
and that just makes for a duller game. Far Cry wants to have its cake and eat it. It wants that beautifully chaotic, wacky gameplay where murderous roosters and backpack payloads come together to deliver a fireworks display of explosions alongside meaty headshots from a surf and turf themed sniper rifle. But then it wants to suddenly get all serious and deliver a contemplative dictator who wants to give his son a better life through what he deems necessary bloodshed and slavery. It's a juxtaposition that just doesn't always work. Then enjoy the show. <laughs> can you whistle? What? Nah, you can whistle. <laughs> The game's wide array of supporting characters, not bound by the often sombre tone of the main plot, fare much better. They're all a familiar blend of a little bit wacky, a little bit irreverent, and very often homicidal. Far Cry 6 is at its best when it's leaning into its more ridiculous impulses, fully acknowledging the absurdity of its open world and the plentiful opportunities for chaos it provides. While some of the main campaign stories do deliver some thrilling moments, the side missions like the treasure hunts and the Yaren stories provide the most fun. It's in these optional asides that the game is let off the leash a little, allowing for more imaginative missions compared to the now familiar takedown base, rinse and repeat mission structure of the main campaign. Instead, there are Indiana Jones-style hunts for crystal skulls, haunted graveyards, and an explosive encounter with a very annoying YouTuber to name just a few missions to look forward to. Because, make no mistake, what a lot of fans are really here for is the wide open freedom promised by Far Cry 6's colossal map. And for the most part, in the wilds and the beaches and the mountains of Yara, that doesn't disappoint. The main city, Esperanza, is billed as the biggest urban landscape in Far Cry history, but unfortunately, it's actually a lot less open than expected. Some players may have hoped to parkour across the city, scrambling up buildings and taking in the sights, but in reality, you can only go to certain areas as most of the city is locked off and inaccessible. You can't climb up most of the buildings and you can't fly across Esperanza either, so that means no base jumping from the top of Anton's palace. Essentially, there's not much to do or see outside of places where Ubisoft is directing the action. Most of the buildings are fake and you can't enter them, so eventually you'll start to crave the more rural areas of Yara once more. Out here, you're given access to most land, air and sea vehicles relatively quickly, although air defences are set up around Yara and these must be blown up in order for you to clear the skies and therefore be able to fly in or airdrop in safely without the risk of exploding. But if you don't fancy air travel, horses are a neat way to get around too. Far Cry 6 marks their first inclusion in a Far Cry game and they're a welcome addition at that, mostly because they're generally resistant to blowing up or catching on fire. Um, mostly. <gasps> oh! What did you do? What did you do to my horse? Interestingly, there's no skill tree this time around. Instead, you equip and wear different clothes to enhance your abilities or grant you various buffs or resistances. You can change clothes whenever you want and full sets grant bonuses, but in all honesty, these perks do seem rather minor, so you may find yourself dressing more for fashion than function. Perhaps more useful is Danny's ability to change up their weapons on the fly, wherever and whenever you want. You'll amass an absolutely huge selection of weapons in the game over time, so it's useful that you can whip any of them out of storage and into your weapon wheel at any time mid-battle, likely when a stealth encounter shifts quite suddenly into an explosive standoff. Central to this combat system now are Supremos, a sort of ultimate attack that takes time to recharge. But these can be super useful in battles. You start off with a Supremo that fires off a barrage of rockets, capable of bringing down a helicopter or a tank in one attack, but over time you'll unlock an assortment of Supremos to suit your own flavour of combat. Given that Danny and their allies are all part of an underground resistance movement, their weapons, modifications and the tools at their disposal are all cobbled together using everyday items found lying around Yara. 
This Resolve Air concept, as it's called in the game, is the concept fueling Far Cry 6's yeah. customization mechanics. You can earn money to buy weapons, but by scrabbling around each area for scraps, you'll be able to spend those on unlocking different interchangeable mods for your guns and supremos. And there's a ton of options out there to pick up, build and experiment with. Sometimes, perhaps, a touch too much, because the sheer amount of collectibles to hoover up does get a little overwhelming at times. This installment also marks the first time a main series game hasn't had a dedicated multiplayer mode or map editor, which I know is going to be a deal breaker for some people. Sure, Far Cry's previous attempts at multiplayer haven't exactly been the most polished of experiences, but they were certainly home to a once loyal and now forgotten community who bought the game specifically to build and experience user-created maps. It's not all doom and gloom for Far Cry fans with friends though, there is a cooperative mode that allows you to play through the majority of the game with a partner, which to be fair, is a lot of fun, along with eight standalone missions called Special Operations that take place across smaller, uniquely themed maps. Oh, and of course, I really do need to mention the bugs. Considering the scale of the map and everything going on inside it, I never once during my playtime had the game crash on me, which of course is good, but I did certainly witness a lot of crazy glitches and rough edges. Played on the PS5, screen tearing was prominent, frame rate dips took the tension out of cutscenes, and the NPC AI, be it enemy or friendly, was at times absolutely atrocious. One time, I fast travelled to an enemy base, and as soon as I spawned, I began to slowly choke to death, even though there was no poison gas present. Another time, all the voices in the game stopped working, necessitating a complete restart. And, well, the less said about the weird potato beards that some of my characters kept growing, the better. So, thank the blockade for that. I we use our boss to pull fish from the sea. And we'll get encountered a bug with this here. game. With at least 60 hours worth of gameplay under the hood, Far Cry 6 will certainly give you your money's worth, and that's not counting the upcoming free DLC crossover missions and the endgame insurgency mode which repopulates certain regions of the map once a week, giving you a never-ending supply of enemies to track down and defeat. But as much fun as noodling around Far Cry 6's world is, it's probably wise to bear in mind the words of Far Cry 3's Vars when he attempted to explain the definition of insanity. insanity he said is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again expecting shit to change and I'd say that statement rings true here because shit has definitely not changed if you were looking for a sequel that would shake up the series and bring about a gameplay revolution you're going to be disappointed but if you enjoy that classic Far Cry collect em up grind and simply want a brand new sandbox to explore and explode you're going to be far from bored with all that Yara has to offer. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it, subscribe to Eurogamer for daily videos about video games, and if you fancy checking out some of our other reviews, we've left a selection of the best on screen for you to click on right now. Goodbye and good luck exploring Yara. Hell of a fireworks show. I have to give you credit, Clara. You fucking did it. We did it, Danny. That was the difference. What's your plan when you reach America? Me and my friend Alejo were going to work shit jobs until we could scrape up some money, open a body shop.